Is iOS catching up to Android in 2024? That is one question I had on my mind since I downloaded the iOS 18 beta back in June when it was first released. And I noticed that there are a lot of key features that Apple highlighted at WWDC as taking a lot of inspiration from Android. The biggest standout feature of iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 is the feature where you can finally put app icons anywhere on the home screen. This has been a feature on Android probably for the last 15 years or so, and it's taken Apple this long to actually catch up to Android in this particular feature. And I think that's because Apple was a little hesitant about allowing users to customize their home screen. But over the past couple of years, they have loosen that stance. In addition to moving app icons anywhere on the home screen, users would also be able to resize widgets from the home screen and we will finally have dark mode icons. This is probably another feature Android has had for a while. I know there are third party apps that have a light version and a dark version, but with iOS 18, if the app has a light and dark mode version, it will change depending on which mode you are using. If the app does not have a dark mode icon, then that icon would get a little bit darker, but you will be able to tell the difference and you should still be able to identify it. The app icons can also have one singular color. I believe a lot of Galaxy phones had this feature, but you guys can let me know in the comments if it had it for the last five years, 10 years, but I am 99% sure Android also had this feature. Overall, I did find the customization options to be really good, but after, let's say the first couple of days, the novelty wore off on me. And I think that's going to be the case for a lot of you too. You're going to be able to look at, it's taken a while, but Apple will finally support RCS in iOS 18. This is going to be huge because now if you are texting an Android user, they would also be able to have read receipts, you would be able to send better quality photos and videos to your Android friends. It's not all rosy, however, because the RCS implementation that Apple has done for iOS 18 is not end-to-end -end encrypted. So if you need to send any sensitive information, it's best not to use RCS for that. Safari also got some neat little updates and now with Safari, you'll be able to remove distracting items on a web page. For example, if you are reading, let's say the Wall Street Journal website and they have a section on the site where a video will automatically start playing or some ads are there, you can use the hide feature in Safari to hide those items and continue browsing the website as you normally would. The Photos app has also gotten a huge redesign and I am still on the fence about it. I don't think it's as good as the original iOS 17, but I do like the fact that you can customize the app to show you only the photos and videos you care about. I think it will take me some time to get used to the new design. iOS 18 also introduces the Passwords app. And if you've used iOS 17 in the past, then this is basically the Passwords menu in settings into its own app. You'll be able to see how many pass keys you have, You'll be able to see all of the passwords to different Wi-Fi networks you connect to, and you'll be able to see which passwords have been compromised or you are repeating. It's a very simple app to use. iMessage to iMessage computations are going to get a little bit more lively. You now have the ability to actually make your messages pop and do all sorts of pretty neat animations. It's unfortunate that that feature doesn't apply to RCS, but it's a very 
iMessage type of feature. And if your whole circle is using iMessage, then this is something that you will probably get a lot of use out of. Messages also now has the feature for you to schedule when to send a message. It's really easy to do. I didn't use this feature uh, because I didn't feel the need to schedule messages. I'm pretty good at sending messages when I want to send those messages. Further customization can also be done to the lock screen. You now have the option to change the flashlight or the camera app. So many different combinations and I have used it a lot. But if you don't care about the lock screen customization in previous versions of iOS, you're probably not going to care with iOS 18. Control Center is also customizable now. You can make your controls bigger or smaller. You can add multiple pages. And iOS 18 is smart enough to know that if you have a gigantic home control in your control center, then it, that page would be assigned to home and you'll see the corresponding icon on the right hand side of your screen. I really like the customization options for Control Center. Again, I am 99% sure this is a feature that Android users already appreciate and use, but it's nice that Apple is finally letting its users do whatever it is they want on their devices. The features that copy Android don't stop there. The biggest feature in my opinion, and the one that's probably going to get a lot of social media attention, especially among the relationship center of Instagram and YouTube, is hiding your apps. Yes, Android has had this feature for a long time. With iOS 18, you'll be able to hide your apps. And once you hide your apps, you will not get any notifications and that app would be hidden in a new folder in your app library called hidden. In order to unlock the app from the hidden folder, you would have to authenticate with either touch or face ID. Besides hiding apps, you now have the ability to lock apps behind touch or face ID. This is a feature I am 99% sure that Android has already had for a very long time. But once iOS 18 comes out and a lot of people start getting their hands on it, you're probably going to see a lot of Instagram reels or TikToks about boyfriends or girlfriends using this feature in order to hide their infidelity or any sorts of addiction. I like this feature, to be honest, and I've used it on quite a few of my third-party apps, such as Gmail. Also did it for Instagram as well. I think it's very useful and it's very helpful that you now have the ability to lock all of your apps behind Touch or Face ID in the event that your iPhone gets stolen. iOS 18 also has a game mode, and that is where your device would be able to use the extra computing power in order to push out graphics to the max. And if you do not play a lot of games on your iPhone, this is a feature that you're probably never even going to use. Smaller features in iOS 18 include a slightly redesigned calculator app where now iOS 18 would be able to help you solve difficult equations it's really useful and I think it's actually a lot better on the iPad, at least according to the demo I saw at WWDC. But you can definitely use Math Notes, that's what the feature is called, on your iPhone. If you are a hiker, you'll be able to download topographic data in order for you to use it when you do not have cell service. Also, I did not mention battery life on my 13 Pro and the 15 Pro that I am filming this part of the video on. Overall, I have to say on the 15 Pro, the battery life was okay. 
Right now, my 15 Pro is on 18.1, and the battery life for that is not so great. On my 13 Pro, because I do not use it as my daily driver, the battery life is slightly better, but your usage will vary. I found the performance on both the 13 Pro and the 15 Pro to be very solid. All of my apps continue to work as expected. And I believe that a lot of developers right now are pushing updates to get ready for the influx of users who will be upgrading to iOS 18. Should you upgrade to iOS 18 when it is released in September? Although the customization options are nice, I would say hold off on it because a lot of third-party developers are making sure that their apps continue to work with iOS 18. And if you have a mission critical app, you definitely do not want to download iOS 18 and all of a sudden you cannot use that app. But I believe that once you do upgrade, I think you're going to love a lot of the features. I think everyone's going to love the hiding apps or locking apps. I also think that a lot of Android users are probably going to watch this video and say things like Android ha has this for years, but, and I know that uh, I've been saying it all throughout the video, but you're definitely going to see a lot of comparisons between iOS 18 and Android when iOS 18 comes out in the fall. I did not go over Apple intelligence because that is coming with iOS 18.1 and I am currently using that version on my 15 Pro. Overall, all I have to say, Apple Intelligence is nice. It needs a lot of work, but what they have released so far is pretty basic and things you can do with a lot of third-party chatbots. But there will be a review of iOS 18.1 when that comes out. I believe that's going to target October. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what your favorite iOS 18 feature is and if you are planning to upgrade on day one. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.